So because of who I am as a person, I have, I have a lot of switch controllers and, and parts and such. Um, I recently bought a uh, lot of controllers here uh, that included a couple of these uh, Nintendo Switch Hori Pro controller things. Uh, and they are wireless. I can pair it up with my Switch, no problem. Um, but it became very apparent why these were in the lot of broken controllers that I purchased. Now, this one in particular, of course, is working just fine. All the buttons work. I have uh, repaired it, no problems. I see I have shoulders, etc. Uh, but anyway, for those who are familiar with these controllers, if you hear me uh, clicking that, Might have noticed something weird about these controllers. Um, this one has been modified with tact switches in all of the shoulder buttons. Uh, that was actually a repair that I did on this one as a uh, test. They seem like decent controllers. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much they are supposed to cost normally, but hey. But anyway, the whole point of this video is not this one. Uh, this one was the, uh, the test mule for my theorized fix. The whole point of the video is for this controller, which is more or less the exact same thing, just a different color. Um, looks like this is a slightly newer iteration of that controller because it does have a USB-C port instead of micro USB, but pairs up, no problem. Uh, and I can use it here, controller, da, 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 test input. And you see all my face buttons work, start, select. Uh, ooh, I forgot that was broken. Well, the uh, L3 does work. We'll have to, we'll have to fix that at some point. Um, but you notice I don't have ZL. Oh, now I do. We'll go figure all the buttons are working now. But anyway. That's besides the point. The problem is that this is what the uh, shoulder button membranes look like. Now, you might notice there is a hole under one of the buttons. Um, there is not supposed to be a hole. I don't know how common this is with these things, uh, but the fact that I had two controllers and both of them are broken in the exact same way, I'm assuming it is pretty common. Uh, but I'm gonna show you what I did to fix it because otherwise these things are e-waste and I don't know what to do with them. But uh, let's go ahead and get it torn down and let's see what we're working with here. Now, spoiler alert, like I said, I have already solved this problem, so it's not too big of a surprise what's going to happen here, but I don't know. Seems like a decent controller and I'd rather fix it than throw it out. The lot of controllers that I purchased actually came with quite a few Switch Pro controllers and Joy-Cons and such. Uh, like these things and uh, I was gonna do a video on fixing them all up but as it turns out it's pretty darn hard to break a switch pro controller so basically the only problems with them are that the cases are scuffed to heck and a few of them need new batteries so I don't, I don't think that makes entertaining content so I don't think we're gonna do too much with that might reshell one of them I think that's all the screw. Nope, one more. And that comes off. On the uh, other controller, the one with the micro USB, there is a button on the back that you have to pay attention to. This one's just a little tack switch, but this one has a membrane under there that you gotta pay attention to. And I hate how cheap these Jesus things are because there's no way to unplug the battery. You have to like completely disassemble it and then desolder it from the motherboard. I think that's just a bad design. That reeks of cheapness. Uh, I'm going to unplug the D-pad and continue disassembling, hoping to not short anything out with my screwdriver. And then 
this whole thing should come out. Mayhap. Kind of stretch the casing around the uh, the port here. All right, so we're a we're I a forward thinker. Someone has had this thing apart before me, and it looks like they lost the LED diffuser for the charge light. So now there's just a gaping hole in the case. Uh, my solution for this was going to be to mix up some clear epoxy and just pour it in there. Um, I think I'm probably going to do that off screen, or at the very least, I'm going to do it later because I'll have to wait for it to set. Oh no, I've lost the button. I'll be right back. I have discovered the button. So let's take a look at the actual problem here, which those don't need to come off for. Let's actually inspect this thing while we're in here. It feels totally fine now. I wonder what the heck that was about. How bizarre. Oh. It was this thing. Okay, well that's an easy fix. I can just replace that. Okay, that's besides the point. Anyway, you can see what uh, what has been attempted to fix this. So I tried two different methods and uh, I am unsatisfied with the performance of both. The first one was to just take the uh, a spare D-pad for a Game Boy Advance and cut out the little membrane part and stick that in the existing membrane for pressing the button. And it does kind of work, but it feels like hot garbage. Uh, the other option was to just cut out the membrane itself and cut the other ribbon in half and uh, just stick the membrane down and hope for the best. And that did seem to work somewhat, but I'm also dissatisfied with that. I think I've already totally forgotten which side was which. Uh, but one side wasn't showing up unless you hit the button a certain way, and the other side was showing up, it just felt like garbage. So, I didn't like either option. So let's fix that. I'm going to pull out that little piece of wire that I was using as a tie-down. And let's take a look at the solution here. So I don't know, I don't have a part number or anything, I just have this assorted pack of tacked switches, and these little ones with the red button seem to be a fantastic match. We'll do all four. Again, sorry, I don't have a part number, but we can measure it. And so from the base to the top of the button, the tack switch is about three millimeters tall, six and a half millimeters wide, and Without the contacts, six and a quarter tall. With the contacts, 8.85 millimeters. And the base itself without the button is two millimeters. I'll try and find a part for that, but the reason that's important, we just wanna, we should be able to do this with any controller really. We just wanna match the height of the membrane to the height of the replacement tack switch. And you can see Tack switch is a little bit shorter, which I think is going to be fine. Well, I've already done this, so I know it's going to be fine. Um, but it is a very close match in height, so as long as we get the positioning correct, we should be good. And uh, like I said, I'm I'm slightly more prepared than usual, so I think we should be good. I'm just going to go ahead and remove both membranes. And close inspection of the uh, shoulder button PCB, which I really wish were easier to remove. Actually, you know what? It looks pretty easy to remove on this controller. Never mind, that comes out really easily. All right, so just in case, just in case that comes off, I'm just gonna capture the position a little bit. I 
I'll use my own video to put it back together if I have to. Now we need I don't think this is the right one. It's not the right one. I have two fiberglass pens. One is coarse, one is fine. I need the coarse one. This is the fine one. I'll be back. I keep one in the case, but I was certain I had lost the case for it. All right. So we need that because we need to scratch the traces and expose the copper. So that I have something to solder to. We can take the button, get one contact lined up, and then try and guesstimate where the other contact should go. And unfortunately, that's going to be a pain in the butt with this one. <sighs> I think I need the multimeter. All right, so here's what I'm double checking. I have it in continuity mode. I just want to see if this pad is a common ground, like I think it is. Yep. And then that one is probably, yep. Cool, 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 cool. So now what we can do, we want to center, it doesn't matter how the buttons are oriented, we just need to connect up two of the pins. So with this particular button, these two pins have continuity with each other and these two pins on the bottom, come on, have continuity with each other. Uh, so that when I press this button down, it connects all four pins together. So, realistically, we only need to wire two of them up. So what I'm going to do, i take my PCB holder, instead of making this difficult on myself. Tin up the trace I just exposed. And we don't have to worry about insulating the button pads itself because the bottom of my button is plastic. The most important part of the fitment is making sure the red button itself is as centered as possible. And we're just going to try and bridge that contact. Whoop. That ain't great, is it? That ain't great. All right, I hate that giant bubble, but we're just gonna work with it. It's, as you can see, when I hit that, the light started flashing, so everything should be working. It is very hot still. And now I just need to do the same thing with the other one. Tweezers, man. The 
hardest part about this, I'd say, is figuring out where to uh, scratch the traces. This one should be a little bit easier. And like all things considered, making a replacement PCB for this controller wouldn't be too big of a stretch. See if that worked. Hey, so that's two down. Two to go. that together and chada just lines up easy peasy and I just gotta do the same thing for the other side and just capturing the orientation just in case I do something dumb That should work. I suppose I should bring that in a little, huh? And it's 100% removable if I ever find replacement membranes. It's unlikely, but if that does happen, So I'll scratch off a little bit more.
Come on. I can't hold this thing, man. Last one's always the hardest. If you want to be done playing video games. All right, there we go. And if all went well, should be good to put it back together. Love these things, little PC bites, PCB eight. Just got them recently on a recommendation, and regretted not getting them sooner. Oh, that's awkward. One of the wires came out. Now it's soldered. Make sure both buttons work. And you can glue the buttons down if uh, worried about longevity, but I think it'll be fine. Isn't the easiest to go back together, is it? There we go. Good lord. there. Set these buttons in. That's kind of weird how this thing goes back together. The little grippies need to get installed I think on the bottom portion. They only fit the one way, and then when you've got the shoulder buttons in their hooks, you drop this thing down. I kind of had to angle it in from the left because of that uh, bundle of wires. But it's supposed to just drop straight down from there. See, this side's clearing, but this one isn't. And I don't know why. 
Feels like it's getting stuck on that button. Here, let me just show off something totally neat that I've definitely tested. should clear. I don't know why it's not. Maybe because this board is not sitting how it's supposed to be sitting. Because these wires are not going where they're supposed to be going. Okay, that's probably my problem. You see on this one the wires come straight out the bottom and get routed. This one the board is sitting on top of the wires. Okay, simple problem with a simple solution. This actually needs to come out. I thought I was going to get away with it too. Alright, pop that board out. Slide it in the correct way this time. And let's try that again. Yeah, these controllers aren't the best to take apart, if you haven't already figured that out. They're, uh, they go back together real easily. Real smooth. Yeah, it feels like there should be a spacer that's going too down, too far down. Because the, uh, the joystick itself is not clearing the potentiometer. Like, without this plastic bit on, that's totally fine. But that doesn't clear. I will have to replace that. Alright. Everything's seated. I'm going to put the screws back in. seated that time. I'm only going to put a couple of screws in because I'm going to have this thing apart again in just a second. But let's put it back together with enough screws that I can uh, handle it without worrying about it coming apart. If all went well, should be good to go. Turn that on. It's all paired up. I have all my face buttons. Now this thing's all messed up. 
but that one works fine. And, ah, my ZL isn't lined up properly. Still, after all that, well, that's unfortunate. But the rest are working. Let's see what I do with, did with ZL. Oh, I see. It got sheared off when I uh, dropped it in that time. That is unfortunate. Doesn't look like I broke anything, though. So let's solder it back on. Definitely a good idea to uh, take this thing apart further so that I don't accidentally hit the soldering iron against the casing and melt it. I think I'm just going to go for it anyway. Oh, it's not connecting. <sighs> All right, what's going on here? Pretty sure there's still plenty of copper there. Yeah. All right, should be fixed. Let's find out. Yep. I hate how this controller is designed. Have I, ever, have I mentioned that yet? This is, uh, this is ridiculous. After seeing what I've seen on the inside of this thing, I would never buy one of these. I recommend that anyone ever buy one, but I already have it. Might as well fix it. I guess just make sure the button's out a little instead of just sending it home. Alright. Try again. There we go. Working great. And uh, I have actually played a few hours with this one. Um, haven't had a single problem with these buttons. All of them are still working great. 
So I'm I'm pleased with the fix. It it turns what was otherwise e-waste into a perfectly usable controller. Um, as soon as I replace that thing, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, I don't think that this is a good mod to do like for shits and giggles. Like if you just want your controller to be tactile, this is probably not the best way to accomplish that. But if you have a controller that is otherwise not working because the membrane's all messed up, then yeah, this is certainly better than getting rid of it. Uh, especially when it uses custom membranes that you can't just get otherwise. Um, does this feel better than the membrane buttons? I wouldn't say it does. I think, I think membranes, um, specifically they, they get you a certain button feel, uh, that hard tactile buttons don't necessarily replace. I don't know. Um, I'm not saying it feels better. It doesn't feel bad. It just feels different. Uh, and I certainly wouldn't recommend this specific mod, you know, if you just want to mix things up with your controller. But if your controller's busted, then what the hell, why not? Smoke them if you got them, remember, right? Anyway, that's all I got. Still don't recommend the controller, but if you have one and it's broken, well, there you go. And I will try and find a uh, part number for those switches I used. Uh, if there's nothing in the description, just, you know, assume I never found anything. Sorry about that, but it is what it is. Uh, you have the measurements, and um, there you go. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. And overtime. All right, let's fix that uh, diffuser and this joystick. I've already got it apart, mostly. Pretty sure that's off, yeah. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. Won't need it, all the work we'll be doing is on the front. Gotta pull this thing out again. Hopefully for the last time. Good lord. That could have gone better. Alright. So here is how I'm going to attempt to deal with that light pipe situation. We're going to clear the hole, make sure there's no debris in there. Like that. Take some tape I have, but a smaller piece. And I'm just gonna seal the edges of that hole as best I can. And wait for the hot snot to heat up. minute. Hopefully it has enough battery. I should have checked it before starting the uh, camera, but here we are. But while that's going, let's take a look at this thing. So we have two options. I can just replace it entirely with another one, which is what I think I'll do since it's pretty chewed up. Um, and unfortunately it means I'm replacing the other one because I'd prefer that they match. I found a bag of Xbox parts. And in it were these. And they're just shiny. They're not actually gooey. They're just 
Oop, forgot that was hot. That was my thumb. And those just go on there. And just so happens that they have better clearances. I don't think that's intentional or by design, but certainly convenient. And this thing is nice and hot. So now I'm just gonna jam the tip in there and put as much hot glue in there that I can as quickly as possible. And hope for the best. I was thinking epoxy, but unfortunately, my epoxy has gone quite yellow. Put my phone in so it doesn't die here. All right. That's off. Let it cool down. Move to some place I won't accidentally stick my thumb into it. And uh, actually, we'll give that a minute, let it cool, and we'll uh, reconvene in a few minutes here. And the best part about silicon mats is you can just peel the hot glue up, it doesn't stick to it. <laughs> Alright. We should be good to reassemble. Uh oh, oh, it's the tape that I put down. I was wondering why my button was getting stuck. Getting real concerned. All right. But we're good, don't worry. I gave the hot glue plenty of time to uh, set up. Set. So we should be good. quite the right sticks, so they do uh, show at the extremes, but hey, they feel fine, so screw it. We'll peel that up, see what we got. Oh, no, the hot glue didn't go as deep as I wanted it to. Oh well. It should still be good enough. Unplug that real quick. You can see, oh yeah, that's that's still heaps better, but not quite what I wanted. I'd have to try again, and I don't really want to though. So let's just reassemble. Shoulder buttons in place. Slip that in. Ah, that went together so much easier this time. Two different size screws in this thing. I messed that up. I think I mixed them up from with the screws from the other controller. That feels like a stripped hole. Nice. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, I'll finish putting all the screws in after the video. Let's just quickly double check that it didn't break anything. Control sticks. And you can see that it's working just fine. Oh, 
It doesn't go home all the time. Interesting. That almost feels mechanical. Oh, maybe that's why it was uh, in the junk pile. Interesting. How bizarre. The other one's fine. All right, uh, to fix this first stick, um, I would just replace the entire stick box, but realistically, I don't think this controller is worth that. So I think I'm just gonna call this fixed and uh, yeah, I don't know. Eh, maybe we'll replace the stick box eventually. I probably have one that's compatible. I just gotta take it apart yet again. Actually, the fact that it's compatible with Xbox 360 uh, stick caps makes me think it'll just take an Xbox 360 stick box too, which I do have plenty of. But anyway, that's all I got. Um, there's still plenty wrong with this controller, but it's usable now, at least it's not e-waste, and it does genuinely have a decent D-pad, so if nothing else I can still use it for Super Nintendo games. Actually, can we calibrate this? Control stick on this controller cannot be calibrated. Yep. And we can't update it because it's not, it's third party. There won't be an update. Oop. Yep, that's what I thought. Oh well, that's fine. I'll just live with it. Anyway. That's all I got. Catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.